One of our most highly requested videos has to do with a 12 volt conversion on an AN Ford and here it is. In this video we are going to show you how to put on all the parts in front of me on this table onto the tractor behind me. It's a 1949 8N Ford. So this is an 8N that has a front mount distributor. If you have an 8N with that same configuration then you will want to follow along. We're going to show you what you do with this big old wiring harness where every single wire goes. We'll show you how to do it safely and so that your charging system works. People will often do a 12 volt conversion for one of two reasons. One reason is their tractor is six volt and it's cranking over hard and you want to freshen up the electrical system, update it to a 12 volt system. Another reason is you bought the tractor and the charging system's not working or you've got extra wires hanging off the tractor and you just wanna clean up and simplify and make the electrical system more safe. No matter what situation you're in, this video is gonna be extremely helpful to you. My dad, Dan, and myself, I'm Rachel, are going to work together and I know at the end of this video, you're gonna have the confidence to do the wiring on your very own 8N Ford tractor. So let's get to work. As you can see, my dad and I have gotten a good head start on this. We took off the battery cable first and you'll want to do the same. Then you can remove the hood. That will expose your old wiring harness, which you can cut off. You can leave your spark plug wires intact if they're in good shape and you don't plan to replace those. You can remove the generator as well as the voltage re regulator. We took off any resistors that were on the system. Also the gauge that's right here and the key switch for the starter switch. So we wanted to replace all of those things. There are some people who can quickly diagnose electrical problems if you're following up on someone else's bad 12 volt conversion. And if you're that person, you're probably not watching this video. So if you are chasing down somebody else's bad 12 volt conversion, it's best to just take it off and start over fresh wire by wire. It's not a hard wiring harness. How many wires are there? Five or six? Six wires I don't remember. Yeah. There's not many. So you can just start over from scratch altogether and I think it'll be a better product in the end. And the starter solenoid on these tractors is rather tricky. They work with ground. So I'm taking the old starter solenoid off, but you have to salvage the little strap that comes off there. So I'm gonna put that back on. Before you put these on, you need to use a wire brush and make sure that the contact is good here because this is all the contact you have. This little gap there, and of course this in here where it touches and where it touches here and where it grounds down to the starter. So we're going to clean all them contacts up, put a new fresh starter solenoid on, um, and, and get it all ready to go. It just simply sits on top of here. On a 9N, they do not have this style starter solenoid. This is strictly for an 8N Ford, so we're dealing with the starter solenoid on an 8N. Sure. Now, do you want to talk about how that's directional? It only yes. goes on one way? Well, I'm glad you mentioned don't that. Don't flip it I around. just get used to putting it on. This has the word battery on it. This has to have the power coming to this side where it says battery. The other side is where the strap goes on, it goes to the starter. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Rachel. I just normally put them on and don't think about that, but that is an important, important part. The part in my hand is called a resistor, but it's actually a dual purpose part. So yes, it is a resistor, but it also works as your terminal block. This is an original style resistor. You may be more familiar with a white porcelain type resistor, and we are not going to encourage you to use that on this style conversion. We're gonna encourage this style instead. So you can just mount it right onto your dash. You should have some existing holes. Ours, the screws had been broken off, so we re-drilled and tapped it. For these screws, you need a quarter 28 tap if you end up needing to do that step. Hopefully you won't have to, but just in case you'll know how that works. So then you can just mount it right onto the back side of your dash here. You can notice that I did take off the toolbox of this one just so that you can see. There is potential that you will not have to remove your toolbox. You can probably leave yours intact. I'm gonna put the gauge in as soon as Rachel's done with this. It's just a simple amp gauge, but we'd like a nice new amp gauge so when we start this thing up, we can see it charge and we don't have to wonder, is the tractor charging or is it not? That's the whole goal here, is to clean this up to have a nice charging system. So the amp gauge just has the two prongs, simple, took the old one out, put the new one in and put the backer behind it. When you purchase a new gauge, it does come with a little washer and nut kit and you want to use those make sure you put the washer on the prong first and then follow it with the nut putting a new key switch in this tractor i personally have grandchildren i do not like a tractor with just a switch on for grandkids out in the shop to uh, flip the switch and start the tractor and uh, get that uh, problem there so i like to put a new key switch in very simple just has a nut and a washer to go on the back 
tighten it down, and then you got the key to remove. We're getting ready to mount the alternator onto the tractor, and it has a unique offset bracket that you can see here. The offset lets the alternator hang out so that the belt gets nice and tight and straight onto the tractor. So this is an important little part right here. Rachel's gonna help me put all the brackets on. We're gonna get this mounted up here. The next important part is this belt part right here. You have to take the front two head bolts off. I'm not real crazy about taking head bolts off that the head's been sealed down for all these years, but you really don't have a choice. So we took them off. This has got head bolts. They are torqued at 55 foot pounds of torque. If you have studs, early engine, they have studs with nuts, it's 65 foot pounds of torque. So we quickly took these off. We got our torque wrench all set up. We're gonna torque them down and we'll be ready to put the rest of the bracket together. So you can see here that I have the belt situated and it's wrapped around the bottom of the pulley. You do need to put a new belt on when you switch to the alternator application. The generator belt will not work. This is easy to do if you have a tractor without a loader. If you do have a tractor with a loader with a front pump on it, replacing your belt is a hefty job. Might take you all day. It's important when you slide your belt in that you have it in the correct groove. It would be easy to say, oh, the belt fits right back here, but that would be incorrect. It does fit in this groove that's closest to the engine. And this bracket here on top is just the adjustment, and it's real easy to see that it bolts on here and tightens down. To make things easier, we have chosen to use a simple one-wire alternator as opposed to an automotive-style alternator that would just be a little more sloppy. Our bracket is situated, when you do this, you want to make sure that the tension on your belt is appropriate. That's why this is slotted here, so you can move the alternator back and forth until your belt is tight enough. When you push it down, you wanna see maybe half inch of, yeah. maybe even three quarters of an inch, somewhere in there, um, would be a good amount of tension for your belt. Not so tight that you wreck the bearings yes. in here or the water pump bearings. Right. Your next step is to change your coil from 6 volt to 12. So this bale will just slide right off the front and it slides forward and you can remove your 6 volt coil. 6 volt coils are typically black in color. It does depend on the manufacturer, but most of them are. Take off your old gasket and then you can put a new gasket in place. It just rests right there and then your new 12 volt coil is ready to go on. This is 2.5 ohms and by changing out your coil, it just makes the system really simple and clean as you don't have need of an additional resistor besides the one that is your terminal block behind the dash. Once you have that on, you can make sure that both of your prongs are intact before you put it on. If you do want to tune up your distributor while you're at it, put new points and condenser in, that's a great idea. We have a separate video that shows you how to put points and condenser and a new cap and such on, so you can look for that tutorial. If you need a new bale because yours is stretched out or your bale is missing altogether, you can order a new one of those when you purchase the coil. Now comes the fun part, this wiring harness. Now you might pull it out of the bag and you might get really intimidated, but don't worry, you can figure this out. So we're gonna start here at the front of the tractor. You're looking for the end that just has the two wires on it, not the two wires that come out of this split. And from there, you can take one wire to put on the alternator, and then the other wire is gonna come right here and go on top of the coil. Now for both of these wires, you're gonna put it onto the post and then put the washer and the nut right on top. When you put your wires in here, just be mindful when you're placing it. Like I'm gonna turn this wire, as I tighten it down, I'm gonna turn it back so that once I have the loom all completed, this wire is gonna be out of the way and not get caught on anything. So just think about that as you're tightening your wires down. The first wire you can attach up here at the front is this white coil wire. This is the wire I just hooked up to the coil. It's gonna go on this end of the terminal block and this is gonna be the only wire that goes onto that post of the terminal block. So you can go ahead and secure that as well. And then the next wires that you'll wanna hook up are probably up here at the gauge. My dad has a multimeter set to continuity and that's gonna help us determine which wire goes where. Cause you can see at the end, you have two red wires. So the same. <laughs> you have to know which one's which. So what we're trying to figure out is this one here is either this one, nope. It would beep. There, there you go. So we know that this wire here is coming from our solenoid. That was not nice. The solenoid, and this is the positive battery cable. So this is going to go to the positive battery cable. So this is the positive, and it's going to go to the positive side of our 
amp gauge. If you look really closely at the back of your gauge, you'll see there's a positive and a negative mark. So this is the, it's going to start at the battery. We should probably put the battery in here to visualize that. But yes. this is, we're going to have a battery, positive battery cable. It's going to come down, go to the solenoid, connect to this wire, and then flow up through here and go to the positive side of the gauge. You're matching up the positive the whole way around. And we want to put it through the gauge because you want to see that the tractor is actually charging. So that's why we're spending the time to show you how to put it correctly through the amp gauge. Now the next wire is this opposite red wire and that's the one that comes up here to the alternator. We hooked that up earlier as well. And that's going to go on the negative side of the gauge. So you can just pull the wire or the nut off, put your wire on and then tighten the nut back up. We like to use a nut driver like this one to make sure that they're tight. We have the switch here and why we have it here, the kit includes a little jumper wire that has to be put in here. So all this jumper wire is doing is jumping because obviously we just talked about the positive here. So you have to get power from here to your terminal block. So we're going to just slip this underneath there right now before we get crazy and, and tighten this down. We're just jumping on the power. I think I got it, Rachel. Thank you. And then the other end is going on the top here. This terminal block, that is all this is right here. It's just a terminal block that we can jumper all of our wires together mm -hmm. for power. So the resistor is down here at the bottom, which you can see, and that's just the top post. So we got to get power to this post. So we're going to grab that up there and we're going to put it on there. Now our ignition switch has two wires and we're going to put the yellow wire is what's feeding the coil for Rachel on that side. And then we're going to grab power right here where we just took the blue wire from our junction block. So we're just going to grab that right here. You want to talk about how you open that up a yeah. little bit? Yeah. Some of these terminal blocks have larger bolts than others, and we've had to have an assortment of wrenches here to make this happen. And I just snip the ring in the middle and widen it out just a little bit, as you can see, just to make it fit on there nice. Um, they make them just a little bit smaller than I like them. So you can see when Rachel takes that off, it fits real nice over top of that. Hold that there for now. So we're going to go over this real quick just to make sure everybody understands what we did here now. So we decided this is the wire coming from our solenoid, which is the positive to the battery. We'll put a red battery cable on here in a minute. That comes up here and it goes to the positive side of our amp meter. We also took power off that positive side to our junction block. The meter, we want to read the power. So it goes across. This is our alternator. So we're reading across that here. The ignition switch, we need to get power to that coil up front. So we just run our blue wire down to the junction block. Our coil, I mean our switch, key switch is in here. And that key switch is coming to the yellow wire and feeding across and the white wire goes to the coil. Now when you wire up your key switch, it doesn't matter. The yellow and black aren't sensitive. So you can right. put, Good point. you can mix those up if you need to. Good point. So let's jump up to the solenoid. Your next step is to connect your solenoid. So there is a yellow wire in your harness and that is made for the solenoid. If you look at the back of your solenoid, there's just one post and that is made for this wire. The wire is going to feed through the loom or the harness there and go all the way down. And if you look at the bottom of your dash, there's a little half circle. It looks like a mouse hole and that is made for this wire. It feeds through and connects right onto the starter button. Now, if your starter button is not working correctly, it's a neutral safety switch. It's it so important that your safety switch works. I have seen countless Ford tractors where that safety switch is bypassed and it just makes me cringe because then your tractor would be able to start in gear and you never want that to happen. Your no. tractor should only be able to start in neutral. So here's how you can test and see if your starter button is working. Again, I have my multimeter set to continuity. So I'm going to put one edge here and then I'm touching ground. Then my dad's going to press the button and when he presses the button, you can hear it beep. That is the sign of a starter button that is it's working correctly, ground. how it should be. It's going to ground. If you discover that your starter button is bad and you want to replace it, I'm going to have my dad show you how to fix it. But first I'll tell you, you put that one wire on the back of your solenoid and then you can replace your battery cable if you need to. If yours looks all frayed and damaged, it's a good idea. This end, it just goes on this prong right here and that's the wire we talked about earlier. And then this will hook up to the battery in a little bit. So next, my dad's going to show you how to replace the starter button. Okay, I have an extra cover up here in the vise, and I'm going to try to do it from the side so that you can see to get this button out and how easy it is to put back in. So I took all the bolts off the perimeter of the cover, 
and just lift it off. Make sure the tractor is in neutral when you take it out. You didn't shift the shift rail. Very important that it was in neutral because we're going to put it back in in neutral. So once you pull the cover out, there's just this bolt. This is what the starter button looks like with threads on the other end of it. We're just going to take the nut off the end and put a new button in. So it's not really that big a deal. It's keyed, it has a slot here on the side, so it can only go in one way and that locks it in. So I'm gonna work at getting it out of here. I already took a screwdriver. There's a little lock tab on the nut. So you have to take a screwdriver and a hammer and take that little lock off. So I've got it off. Unfortunately, it's a great big wrench. It's an inch and a 16th wrench to get that nut loose on that. And it's kind of in a tough spot to get to. So I'm just gonna work it out. Once I get it loose, maybe I can get it out with my fingers. Yep, I can. So I've got it loose. I'm going to try to work the button out as I go to give me some slack on the nut. Now when you take it off, you got to get this through the hole. So you got to save that old nut in the lock washer and this part here. All has to come off and you got to save that because we got to get it back on. This is the safety mechanism right here that the button pushes through that the tractor has to be in neutral. So when you shift it, it allows this to be a neutral only to allow that button to push through. Pretty ingenious idea um, and it works very well. The new one has a gasket right here to make sure you get that gasket. It keeps the oil from getting all over your foot. It has a special slot in it, so I'm just trying to get it in the slot. And then we got to get this all back together. So give me just a minute here to wrestle this all in place. And unfortunately, I dropped the lock washer. Just trying not to do that. Thank you, Rachel. So Rachel and I got to get this all in. So I'm going to hold the button. Here? Yep, hold the button, Rachel, and I'll put it back in the hole. Yep, back up a little bit. Back up. There you go. Now put it through everything. There you go. The lock washer, the lock tab has a groove in it. We're really close. We're really close. Okay, hang on. The lock washer only goes on one way. This would be probably a lot easier if I could look right at it. There it is. So I got the lock washer on. I got the nut started. And you can see I got the nut started with the lock tab. It's just a matter now of, of screwing it in. Is it going down nice and tight? It is. So I'm keeping this straight here. The lock washer's in. I'm just going to tighten the nut down just like that. It's a bit more challenging from the side, isn't it? And once I get it tightened all the way in, I just pound that lock tab back down on the nut. And then Rachel will go ahead and push the button. And you can see the button comes through here when the tractor's in neutral. Simple replacement makes the tractor a lot safer. Just put it back on the tractor. There's a gasket here, so we're going to put a new gasket on and put it right back on. We chose to use a braided ground cable like this one, and you may want to do the same. I like it because it's just easily recognizable as to what cable is ground. It looks different than the opposite end. When you're installing a battery, you always want to remember you put the hot one on first because if I touch metal with my wrench, it does not arc. If I had this ground cable hooked up and I touched ground, you're going to get a huge arc. So you always hook your hot cable up first. I'm going to do that right now. Put the hot cable in here. Make sure I get all my wrenching done now, especially if I had the right size wrench, um, before I put the ground cable on. That way there's no chance I'm going to touch yep. anything over there by Rachel. Even touching the line for the oil pressure will put you into a short situation. That line will make the ground. So you want to have this done first, then we go on to our negative cable, which is ground. So we're going to put that on last. So we're going to make sure we got that ready to go. So when you convert to 12 volt, you're changing, your battery cables are going to be opposite. Now this is a negative ground system, right. where before when you were on six volt, it was probably positive ground if it was hooked up right. So make sure it's a negative ground on a 12 volt system. Also make sure that when you put your battery in that it is fully charged. You definitely need a fully charged battery right off the bat so yes. that it will excite the new alternator that you just installed. That's right. We went ahead, our tractor doesn't have that metal loom that most tractors do have, so we just use some zip ties to pull the harness up out of the way. You wanna make sure that your wires aren't touching the head, the manifold, even the spark plug, just out of the way so that it doesn't get too hot. And you can do the same um, with zip ties or you can feed it through the loom if you have that and want to use it as well.
Your wiring harness does come with one orange wire that is designed for headlights. In this video, we're not gonna show you how to wire up headlights. We're just focusing on the 12 volt conversion aspect. But if you wanna go ahead and wire up headlights, you are welcome to do so. Use that extra wire that's in the harness. Make sure that your switch is wired up correctly and also change your bulbs from six volt to 12 volt bulbs and your headlights should be all set to go. Not quite enough gas. <laughs> We're adding gas here with the uh, gas can. <laughs> we normally would use our little portable gas right? can, but we're trying not to put things in the way here. So We did replace this with a new metal fuel line. At the beginning of the video, you'll notice maybe that it was chopped off, so we put a new gas line on it. Clean that up a little bit. Look at that. We're not running the tractor long. Again, we don't have the radiator on. Um, I should say, you don't need to take your radiator off to do a 12 volt conversion. <laughs> no. We just took ours off so you can see what we're doing. Leave your radiator on. But we just wanted to run it for a little tiny bit just to make sure that our gauge is showing a positive charge. And that's what you want to see as well to indicate to you that your charging system oh. is working as it should. It'll start so much better and charge. Yes. So when you are ready to do a 12 volt conversion on your tractor, you can buy the 12 volt conversion kit from us and add any extras if you need a key switch or an amp meter gauge, anything like that. And when you buy the kit from us, we also include printed instructions with the wiring diagram to help you. This is a more advanced uh, repair or conversion on your tractor. And so we want to make it really clear to you. So we're providing you with written instructions and this video instruction to make it foolproof and give you the confidence you need to do a 12 volt conversion that is correct and proper and works, works. <laughs> when you're done. So I hope this video is helpful to you. You can subscribe to our channel as we release new videos all the time and that will give you a notification. Also look back through history of videos. On the 8N we have a carburetor video, hydraulic video, clutch replacement, yeah. um, distributor. Engine rebuild. Yeah, I mean we have tons of videos on this model tractor so it'll be a resource to you as you own your tractor. I think you'll find those videos very helpful. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.